Hi everyone, it's Daniel here. Today I will be reviewing another Genesis album, which is Nursery Crumb from 1971. So yeah, this is it. Uh, the third studio album. The first, al the first album to feature Steve Hackett on guitar and the first album to feature Phil Collins on drums, percussion and backup vocals. So brilliant. We have the perfect... Um, we have the perfect um, lineup here, the Fabulous Five, if you want to call them that. So it's a front, very cool, a bit creepy with the heads and the, you know, the woman playing golf or something. And then you got her in the background with um, roller skates. It's a bit weird, but yeah. Paul Whitehead, very creative um, artist. Uh, the Genesis logo, very nice. The original, they only used that one for two years. Um, this album, Foxtrot, so yeah. Uh, this album is a massive improvement from Trespass. Like we get more of a progressive rock sound. That that folk sound we got from the last album. It, yeah, you can't really hear it on this album. To be fair, so that's cool. Spine and back. Very interesting. Uh, I don't really pay attention to the back, but yeah, I do quite like the artwork. Like some of you have seen like a modern album cover or something. That's the whole thing. Very cool. We haven't got an office to our so we've got a tree at the back with a statue in, I think that's the, I don't know who that bloke is, but and then this side we have the woman playing like playing golf with the chopped off heads, I don't know, very creepy but pretty cool. And here's the inside, so here are all the songs. Uh, I'll go through them in a minute, um, but this is pretty cool, so we've got um, like we've got a picture for each um, each song. Very nice. Musical box, Harold the Barrel, Seven Stones, Fab Some Friends, which Phil Collins sings lead vocals and Steve plays, um, uh, Steve Hackett plays um, acoustic guitar. So it's just them two, the two new members of the band, which, yeah, pretty much from this album onwards, you get used to them eventually. Of course, because they're like some of the best members in the band. So we've got um, The Phantom of Star Massus, which might be my favorite track. Uh, the Return of the Giant Hogweed and Harlequin. Very nice. Very nice pictures. Very creative album cover for the 70s, 1971. Here's the record. Charisma Records. There's side one. And there's side two. There it is. Let's go through all the tracks. The opening track is The Musical Box. A very good song. I love that. Um, I think it's Hops Accord in the intro. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it, I think it's, I'm not sure, Hops chord, jangly piano, I don't know, I like the intro, and then you get that really heavy guitar solo, which is flipping, flipping wicked, I love it, I love Steve Hackett, he's a great guitarist, Mark Rutherford, I mean, he was great and all, but Steve, he's definitely the better guitar player, no offence, Mark, but you're better at bass, so that's great, For Absent Friends, a very beautiful song, um, we just, um, just um, Phil and Steve. Very nice, I really like that one. Um, uh, they would do a track like that later on called More For Me, which, um, yeah, which was on Southern England by The Pound. Um, uh, on the next album, Fox Shot, we got an instrumental called um, Horizons, which it was just Steve on the guitar, playing beautiful um, notes and harmonics and all that. Next track is Return Giant Hot Hogweed. You, got, <laughs> you get that really heavy guitar intro and you've got the really heavy clavinet as well you know both Steve and Tony playing you know their respective parts and then you get the drums and you get um uh, you also get the bass line as well the bass line is absolutely killer in that song you get some really nice vocals from Peter some quite like <laughs> quite intense vocals as well so that's a great song split into like I think it's two parts so you get Return of the Giant Hogweed, and then you get um, the dance of the Giant Hogweed, which very interesting, yeah. Uh, I like the um, I like the different sections in the song, and that bass line, absolutely mind-blowing. Like Mike's playing a lot of notes um, in that song. Also, I've got to mention the producer once again, it's John Anthony, but I feel like the production on this album's a uh, massive improvement from the last album. Like, yeah, the instruments actually sound like yeah, the instruments sound a lot better here, and the planes a lot better too. But yeah, and then we have side two, Seven Stones. Um, you know, 
quite a nice track, I quite like that one. Uh, I think it's about a ship or something, I'm not sure, but yeah, do quite like that song, um, Howl the Barrel. Um, not, I don't know, it's a bit of a 50-50 song for most people, but I really enjoy that song, it's quite quirky. You get Mr Plod referenced in the song, the BBC as well. I really like that song, Harold the Barrel, you know, it's quirky, the piano sounds nice, the outro is really, really <laughs> pretty cool too. And um, yeah, I think it's just a quirky, fun song. You get both Peter and Phil singing uh, vocals, playing different characters throughout the song. You get the news, the man in the street, the man on the council, the man on the spot, British public, Lord Mayor, Mr. Plod, Harold, you know, Harold the Barrel, 67 year old Miss, Mrs. Barrel. It's just a quirky, silly song, but it's fantastic, and yeah, if it was released as a single, I would understand. Uh, so yeah, the next track we have is Harlequin, quite a pretty track, I like that one. Uh, it's quite short, not, well, yeah, not really, but yeah, the shorter tracks, not a lot happens in them, but you know. Same goes for How of the Battle, but yeah, still, still a very good song, I like that one. Uh, the guitar playing from Steve is absolutely fantastic, I mean, you've got Mike, Tony and Steve, all three of them on the guitars, you know, all playing different parts on the um on their own like playing um just all playing their own acoustic guitars and it's quite nice to be fair. <laughs> Sorry about that, my barn was a bit dusty but yeah. Anyhow, the final track is probably my favourite, the Fountain of Sarmastis. Um fantastic Mellotron intro. Um this track and Watch of the Skies are like two of my favourite um Peter Gabriel Errol. Uh, Genesis songs and that guitar solo when when literally like all the instruments stop and it's just a guitar fantastic I flipping love that song absolute masterpiece so yeah all the songs of this album are great I love uh, Nursery Crime is it my favourite Genesis album? Mm, I'm not sure the production on the later albums would definitely be um, much better but still a great album can't deny that this is an uh, absolute masterpiece I mean it's the first album to feature Phil and Steve uh, you still got Peter, of course, on vocals. He does a fantastic job, especially on tracks such as um, Return of Giant Hogweed and Fountain of Sarmassus. Um, he plays different characters here, and even Phil does too on Howard the Barrel, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so we've got Tony Banks on organ, Mellotron piano, electric piano, 12 string guitar and voices, My Michael Rutherford, he's still called Michael here, on bass, bass pedals, 12 string guitar and voices, Peter Gabriel on lead voice, flute, bass drum, and tambourine. Steve Hackett on electric guitar and 12 string guitar, and Phil Collins on drums, voices and percussion. Uh, produced by John Anthony, engineered, engineered by David Henshaw, which he would later be the producer on Wind Above Rain, and then there were three in Duke. Uh, tape jockey was Mike Stone, sleep design was done by Paul Whitehead, and it was inspired by the musical box, which of course that's a 10 minute open truck, absolute masterpiece. Get some great guitar solo, especially on Fauta, so Mass as well, all the instruments just stop it, it's just a guitar, and it sounds so heavy. Like, I mean, Genesis has never been the heaviest band, but my goodness, that's so low. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just music to your ears. Anyhow, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been my review of Nursery Crime by Genesis. Let me know what you think of this album. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I know a few people think this is the, this is the best album, which, fair enough. Uh, this is definitely one of my favourites. It'll definitely be in the top ten. But yeah, they'll probably make a few better albums after this, but this is still an absolute masterpiece and I'll definitely recommend it for anyone who's, you know, getting into Genesis. This might be like the best album to get into. Like, if you never listen to Genesis, if you don't really want to listen to the whole catalogue, this would be definitely be the perfect first album to um, buy and listen, you know, that sort of thing. Definitely the first album to go to if you want to become a Genesis fan. Anyhow, thanks for watching and I shall see you all next time. Peace.